welcome back to our talk on sequence alignment and today we are talking about the basic concepts and some of the methods and algorithms in sequence alignment. So, in the previous section we talked about the basic concepts and in this section we would be talking about the methods and algorithms. So, before I go further let us have a quick summary what we talked about in the previous section. We talked about what is sequence alignment that it is it is residue by residue correspondence in two or more sequence and we give a score to every alignment and the score is decided on the basis of matches, mismatches and gaps. We define a distance function for any alignment and we have indel and edit functions in that. We use different scoring matrices and we talked about two matrices one is PAM and the other one is Blossom. We could have different types of alignment that is it could be global alignment or it could be a local alignment. The alignment not only reveals the similarity meaning the contextual similarity, but it also gives us information about the phylogeny and evolution based on these sequences. So, this is what we learnt in the previous section and here we will be talking about four methods or algorithms in sequence alignment and I will deliberately miss the uh, have foc I have kept my focus more on the biology biological part of it is rather than the mathematics and computer part of this because the audience probably is more of biology students. So, we will be talking about four methods here one is dot matrix the other one is Needleman and Wunsch method that is for global alignment. We will also talk about Smith and Waterman method for local alignment we will also talk about the approximate methods. So, starting with the dot plot what is a dot plot is, is you know we write it straight dot plot is a table where row corresponds to the residue of one sequence and columns correspond to the residue of the other sequence. And what do we get out of a dot plot? Dot plot gives us a quick pictorial statement about the relationship between the two sequence. So, I said we take one sequence as a row and we take other sequence as a column. So, how will it, it look like? just have a look this will look like this one sequence I have used as a row and one sequence I have used as, as a column and what I do is I plot a dot wherever it is same the coordinates where the residue are same we plot a dot over there and these dots they give us several situations they where they carry very important meanings or informations like they take this example. Here in the first one I am comparing the term which I said is a sequence bioinformatics with bioinformatics meaning it is a self comparison and it gave you what a exact diagonal with no, no uh, disturbance of any type. So, when we have a self comparison we get a principal diagonal. If we compare the unrelated sequence the dot plot will not show you any relation on the right side you see the dot plot of unrelated sequences. If we take further examples like if I start making a dot plot for sequences which differ in length say for example the one on the left side the uh, one sequence is shorter than the other there is one and in between and what is there you can see the gap in the plot that there is one is longer and the other one is shorter. And on the right you can see that if we insert gaps in these sequences we can always make up and identify uh, identify them with dot plot. Another thing we can also de we can also uh, detect deletions this way like if you see the sequences which I compared on the left side had deletions. And same way you know it gives lot of information about the functional uh, aspect like if we get a, a diagonal like this a reverse diagonal it will show you what it, it tells you that there are inverted repeats in the 
in the sequence that one sequence is the repeat of the other one. So, dot plot interpretation say for example, I did it again for two sequences sequence 1 and 2 and I kept them one in the column and one in the row uh, top row and the leftmost column, column and I got four types of uh, plots here. One is I got a principal diagonal, the one which is the longest from one end to another. We also got sub diagonals meaning the at other regions also there is similarity. We got a forward sub, sub diagonal, we could get a backward or reverse sub diagonal. So, in the same plot we could get lot of information, the complete information about this sequence. So, the dot plot can have applications in study of and they have limitations also. So, first we talk about the applications, this is such a simple plot where it is applied and how it has become very useful. So, it tells us about the similarity of the in the sequences because the diagonal represents the similar regions. So, principal diagonal shows the identical sequence and we could also know the global and local alignments uh, as I, I showed you in the previous graph. If we have additional diagonals, we can know that the sequence is resembling at the other regions also or if the, it is global or local, we can predict on the basis of that. We can uh, multiple diagonals also, we can uh, interpret those and the reverse diagonal I just showed you, it shows us that it is an inversion. Similarly, we can know the palindromes in the sequences and formation of boxes indicate that the low complexity regions in this, uh, in these sequences. So, with such a simple dot plot, we can have lot of information about the sequences, but these dot plots have limitations like you know if we have longer sequences the memory required for the graphical representation is very high. So, we cannot do long sequences with dot plot. Similarly, there is lot of insignificant matches and that makes it noisy meaning there is lot of you know additional diagonals which create confusion. Then similarly, the time required for comparing two sequences is proportional to the length of the sequence. So, that also creates us, gives us a limitation. So, of course, dot plot is very important, one of the basic one, but it is limited if we are going to compare large number of sequences and as I taught you earlier, if we are talking about metagenomic data where we have huge data large number of sequences, I am sure everybody can appreciate it is not going to work there. I just left, I just wanted to introduce you some softwares, but I will just quickly skip them here. I just wanted to tell you the names like we have GCG or maybe emboss package, but we will be taking them again when we will talk about the tools and methods in the next lecture. So, that was about dot plot and one method easy method and very easy to understand very easy to implement. The next one was Nidelman and Wunsch method. The Nidelman and Wunsch method it is an algorithm basically written by Nidelman and Wunsch in 1970 and he developed an algorithm for sequence alignment based on dynamic programming. So, what is dynamic programming? Dynamic programming usually refers to simplifying a decision by breaking it down into sequence of decision steps over time. So, dynamic programming is more of a computer concept and the computer students understand it in one go very quickly. But for biology students, it is also an important trick where you know you, they can understand it as you know it refers to a step where we take the decision by breaking it down into, into smaller steps and these steps we try to perform that in steps over time. And the other thing about Nidelman and Wunsch algorithm is that it performs the global alignment because in the previous section. I told you what is a global alignment. So, the Nidelman and Wunsch algorithm 
it tries to align the sequence considering the complete sequence it just ignores the local alignments. So, this algorithm I told you already it tries to align the optic optimally the sequence alignment is optimal and it is not appropriate for local alignment. So, because you know it what it is doing is is that within two sequences or for aligning a long sequence with a short fragment it fails why because it imposes a gap penalty outside a similar region. So, this algorithm worked well for global alignment, but it, it did not work very well for the region for the alignments where we are comparing the fragments of different lengths or we are looking for local alignment. But how do they do this alignment is that they start at the end of each sequences and then they move ahead one amino acid pair at one time allowing all possible combinations of matched pairs, mismatched pairs and an extra amino acid in one sequence. For every position a score is given and the objective, objective is to determine the position of the highest score. So, if we see this thing in a picture how will it look like? It looks like this. I have taken two very small sequences and if we try to align this what they will do is they will start at the end of each sequence and then move ahead one amino acid pair one at a time allowing all possible combinations of matched pairs, mismatched pairs or extra amino acids in one sequence and it will move forward that way. So, every position for every position there is a score given and the objective of this alignment is what? The objective is to get the position with the highest score right. So, it starts from one end it reaches to the other end and the objective is to get the highest score. So, let us consider the alignment of two strings small strings with this Nidalman and Wunsch algorithm and the scoring scheme is what with a very simple scoring scheme that for a match will give a 0 mark 0 score for a mismatch will give minus 1 and for an insertion or deletion will give 1 and both vertical move and horizontal move provided the minimum value and the alignment according to I am just showing the alignment by both vertical and horizontal move here. So, this shows the matrix after the completion of the values. So, the top row and the leftmost column have been initialized and the element in the second row and the second column has been entered as minus 1 mismatch. So, we get a score and we got 3 best alignments and you know we got three best optimal alignments, but it did not take into consideration the local alignment. And to overcome this problem another method came that was Smith and Waterman algorithm. So, what uh, meaning for uh, Needleman and Munch algorithm it went very well for optical alignments optimal alignments, but for local alignments modifications in this you needed to be done and Smith and Waterman did these modifications. So, Smith and Waterman algorithm what did it do? The Smith and Waterman algorithm it mainly it modified the Needleman and Wunsch algorithm and it tried to get the local optimal local alignment in the sequences because to get local alignment also is the is important because that tells us the regions of the functional importance the uh, the locations where the functionally important that is the functionally important portion of the sequence. So, this was a modification and they first used this for protein sequences in 1981 and they developed this algorithm 
So, this not only aligned the sequences for optimal alignment, but also recognized the insertions and deletions of any size likely to be found due to due in evolutionary change. So, it took into consideration the insertions and deletions also and it was good for local sequence alignment. It begins the it begins to trace, uh, trace back at the at the maximum value found anywhere in the matrix and it continues until the score falls to 0. This is how a matrix in and Smith and Waterman algorithm would look like. It, it uh, assigns a score to each pair of bases. It only uses similarity scores, positive scores for related residues and negative scores for substitution and gaps. It initializes the edges of the matrix with 0 and as the score are summed up the matrix, any score below 0 is recorded as 0. So, these were the salient features of this algorithm and this in introduced several changes over the previous algorithm and I just list some of the changes which made it better is first is that it the value at the top row and left column was set as 0. As a result of this either sequence can slide along the other one before the alignment starts without incurring any gap penalty against the residue it leaves behind. Then scoring of Nidelman and Munch alignment is the number at the rightmost column of the lowest row. But in Smith and Waterman algorithm it is the optimal value encountered wherever in the matrix it appears. So, it focused on the optimal value and in the global alignment the trace back to determine the actual alignment starts at the rightmost column of the lowest row cell. In Smith Waterman method it starts at the cell containing the cell containing the optimal value and continues back only as far as the region of local similarity. So, that was yeah. So, that was about the changes which have come in the in the Nittleman and Munch algorithm that led to the development of Smith and Waterman algorithm and that included the the local alignments also and these algorithms are very popularly used and they are backbone of several softwares and tools which you use for multiple sequence alignment. The last method which could be which is very useful and we have talked about that earlier when we were talking about NCBI BLAST also that is the approximate method. What is the approximate method? Approximate method is also known as word or k tuple method and what is word or k tuple because it takes a small integer and determines all instances of k tuple or word of k length residues in the probe sequence. So, what is that? That it first decides it runs over the sequence and it decides how many uh, meaning word of which size it should consider and the k value of the k tuple and then it starts searching and starts comparing it to your database. So, it works much like you know the word search puzzles. So, it you know it has the advantage because it requires much less computer time, it is faster, it is quicker, but it is much like the word or the search puzzles. And I said already these methods are very fast and they are used in FASTA and BLAST and they, they sometimes you know they, they are very good to use because they are very fast and they are easy to implement. So, those were the first methods which we wanted to talk about. So, 
it summarized what we learnt about uh, sequence alignment in today's talk because this is going to form the basis for our next lecture in the tools and sequence alignment, the interpretation of the alignment, how to derive meaning out of any alignment. So, we talked about sequence alignment and we defined it as what? Sequence alignment is identification of residue to residue correspondence in two or more sequences. When we do it in two sequence or maybe MSA multiple sequence alignment is very common and now it is not difficult for you to understand when we have done metagenomic sequence alignment. So, what is the aim of any alignment? The aim of any alignment is, is to get a maximum score or the highest score and the score is decided on the basis of matches, mismatches and gaps. right? The score is decided on the basis of matches, mismatches and gaps and we define a distance function for two sequences and the distance function is defined by looking at the, at the alignment which gives us the maximum score and now we understand very well what is a added function and why we call it as indel and we understand the indel and the added functions. We have in details discussed about the dot plots and I hope everybody can appreciate that how simple they are to plot and how easy it is to interpret the dot plots. We also talked about the global uh, sequence alignment algorithm that is Needleman and Wunsch algorithm and in details we discussed about the limitations which we faced, but it is a very good one for global alignment. But if you are going to go for local alignment, it failed in several cases. So, modifications of the in this algorithms were done and we got what? The local alignment algorithm by Smith and Waterman and that we can get the optimal local alignment by this algorithm is quite popularly used and we discussed about how these two algorithms, Needleman and Wunsch algorithm, they are different meaning how the Smith and Waterman algorithm is advanced compared to, to the Needleman and Wunsch algorithm. We talked about scoring matrices and we also look into the details how these scoring matrices were built and we also talked why Blossom uh, matrix is more practical and is in use nowadays compared to PAM matrix or Dayhoff matrix. We also talked about the approximation methods for quick search in BLAST and how they have been useful and quicker and how we can get the, uh, the result very fast result with approximation methods. We took example of several enzymes to understand that alignment not only reveals the similarity meaning the contextual alignment meaning it is matching the words rather it tells us lot of information about the molecular phylogeny and evolution of the sequences. I also showed you several plots made by the students in the class using the most popular software of multiple sequence alignment that will be talking in details in the next lecture that is Clustal. And in Clustal, we could get the, the several sequence alignments and uh, we could interpret that also and it was just a beginning because in the next, in the next one, we in the next talk, we will talk about the multiple sequence alignments taking several example sequences and you know, we will look into the different methods for that. So, I hope you can mail me questions if you have any questions about these multiple sequence alignments. And that was just a small cartoon you know, because you know what has happened is that lot of computer people have joined us with biology and they keep working on sequence alignment and that is a group of humorous people. If you see around, I get a cartoon for everything, every process in bioinformatics. 
So, it is a small just to give you a sense of humor that multiple sequence alignment is because you know in here he is showing you it can be local, it can be optimal and different algorithms they try to align them and get best out of it. Meaning the two sequences like letters they just try to adjust them that they are they are the best. So, with this one I would just end this talk here and we look forward for the next talk where we will be studying Clustal, MAF and other sequence alignments m softwares along with the methods and I will take into consideration the several sequences which we have run for our work. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you.